Hi friends, my name is Hannah Jablonski and I am back with another fun project idea that you can do at home. This project is inspired by a comics class that I've taught before at CCT. Comics and theater to me go hand in hand because when you're planning a play, you've got to think about the story and the characters and the setting and the costumes and the dialogue and these are all really important things in a comic too. Of course you can make a comic about whatever you want but I thought it'd be fun to share an idea for a comic with everyone, just so we can see all the different directions that people take it. So I call this the What Have the Birds Been Up To Challenge. The idea here is that you're gonna create a three panel comic that shows what the birds have been up to. I don't know about you, but I've been spending a lot of time looking out my window lately and watching the birds and wondering what they think about current events and how they're spending their time. I'm going to show you a few basic comic skills to get you started and to get those creative juices flowing. I'm excited to get started. I hope that you are too. Let's get to it. The first thing that I want to talk about is panels. Panels are the building blocks of comics. They are the squares or rectangles where the action takes place in a comic. You can set your panels going from top to bottom like these panels here that you read from the top to the bottom, down the page, like one, two, three. Or you can set your panels going across the page, just like these ones. They don't need to be perfectly square. And you read these going from left to right, like one, two, three. And if you wanted to start a new line, you would continue in that left to right pattern all the way down the page. So the next tool that we're gonna add into our comics toolbox is the speech bubble. You know them, you love them, you've seen a speech bubble before, but we're going to go over a few different kinds of speech bubbles and different times you might want to use each of them. We're going to start off with the most basic one. So I'm going to get our first character to the side here, draw a little bird body, give him an eye and a beak and some little bird legs. So when I'm doing a speech bubble, I always start with the letters first. This is so, once I do the letters, I draw the speech bubble around, I know I'm never gonna run out of room for what I'm trying to write. This is just regular speaking, like how I'm talking to you now, but if I wanted a character who's whispering, this is how you do that. So getting another bird friend in here. So for whispering, maybe I'll make my letters really small to show talking in a, a very small voice. And instead of a solid line, I'm gonna use a dotted line to show that my character is whispering here. On the other side of things, oh, let's get some wings in before I move on. Birds need wings. On the other side of things, if I wanted to have a character who's shouting and really excited, this bird's really excited, he's flapping his wings. And if I wanted him to be shouting and have an excited voice, we're going to use a different kind of letters, big letters, capital letters, different sizes, exclamation points, and a pointy, exploding speech bubble to show how excited my character is. The last tool that we're going to put into our comics toolbox today is point of view. Point of view can mean perspective or a different way of looking at something. And it it's important to use in a comic because the point of view that you take shows your viewer what details are important to focus on. The first point of view that we're going to talk about today is something called a wide shot. I like to use a wide shot usually for the first panel of my comic because in a wide shot you're going to see a lot of the background and maybe a small version of your character. And it lets your reader know right away what the setting of your comic is. So if I want my comic to take place at a park, I'll put in a tree, put some leaves on the tree for texture. I'll put a branch on that tree for my bird friend to sit on later. And since we're at a park, I'll put a little bench down here. No people on it yet, but maybe eventually. Put some legs on that bench. And maybe I'll do a hill behind the bench. And I'll put a sun and maybe some clouds in the sky. The more detail you add to your setting, the more alive it's gonna feel, which is, I guess, what you want. And at this point, maybe I'll do 
I'll draw my little bird friend on the branch here. And he's small now, but that's okay because we'll have plenty of time later on to give him his close-up moment. The next point of view that we are going to talk about once I get my panel in here is something called a medium shot. So we're getting a little bit more close in than a wide shot. A medium shot is great for conversations because you can see characters from the waist up. So you see their hips and their torso and their arms, or I guess if you're drawing a bird, their wings. So I'm gonna get the wing in there, give him a little feather on his head, and I wanna draw his friend in this medium shot too because they're having a conversation. So let's make a squirrel friend for the bird. And they're talking about acorns, and this acorn the squirrel found. Maybe he wants to share it with the bird. So nice, they're good pals. So let's get that acorn in there, and I'm gonna draw a nice happy expression on my squirrel because he's trying to be a good neighbor. And at this point, I can start to draw my speech bubbles in there too to show the conversation that they're having. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna get another panel in here. We're gonna talk about close up. Close up is exactly what it sounds like. You get close up to one character or one detail in particular. So maybe you want to get really close up to your bird's face and show off a particular emotion that your character is feeling. My bird's feeling scared about something. I don't know what it is yet. But a close up would be a perfect opportunity to show off a crazy expression or focus on a feeling that one character is having. So. We've added a lot of tools to our comics toolbox today. That is fabulous. But I just wanted to remind you that there are plenty of more points of view out there that we didn't cover. And the world is yours to explore. Maybe you want to try a bird's eye view and looking down at your subject from above. Super cool. Or maybe you want to try drawing your characters in action and flying through the air. Also great. Gonna draw a little flying bird in here. Or maybe you want to draw your character's face on instead of from the side or from above. Totally cool. In comics, there are no strict rules, and really it's what you like and what you think works, which is, in my opinion, what makes comics so great in the first place. Well, that's it, folks. We talked about panels, speech bubbles, and a few different points of view to help you take your comics to the next level. I really hope you take the What Have the Birds Been Up To challenge. I am so interested to see what you create. When you're finished with your comic, you can, of course, show your family, show your friends, or you can take a photo and email it to this address on your screen so the wonderful people at CCT can appreciate your work. If you're looking for more virtual activities in theater, you should check out our YouTube channel, CCTV. And if you are looking for more information about our summer camps, you should go to this website on your screen. All right, friends, I hope you had fun today. I know that I did. Until next time, bye.